Today, we are going to look at a body vis brain builder about the larynx and laryngitis. The larynx is the most superior structure of the upper respiratory system. The larynx opens superiorly and posteriorly into the pharynx, and inferiorly it opens into the trachea. The larynx is composed of three large unpaired cartilages, which are the thyroid, cricoid, and epiglottic cartilages. Three pairs of smaller cartilages, including the arytenoid, corniculate, and cuneiform cartilages, a fibroelastic membrane, and several extrinsic and intrinsic muscles. Let's learn more about the cartilages of the larynx. The thyroid cartilage, which does not completely surround the larynx, is composed of two plates, a right and left laminae that meet in the anterior midline, forming the laryngeal prominence, which is also termed the Adam's apple. You may be able to see or feel this depending on the size of your thyroid cartilage by running your hand gently across the front of your neck, just inferior to where your neck meets your lower jaw. The cricoid cartilage completely encircles the inferior portion of the larynx and articulates with the thyroid and arytenoid cartilages. This piece of cartilage, along with the thyroid cartilage, protects the portion of the larynx consisting of the vocal folds and the opening between them turn the glottis, as well as the entrance to the trachea. The epiglottic cartilage, also termed the epiglottis, is a leaf-shaped piece of cartilage located posteriorly to the root of the tongue. The superior edge of the epiglottis is free, but the other epiglottic surfaces are attached. The three pairs of smaller cartilages play important roles in supporting the opening and closing of the epiglottic cartilage. The larynx is composed of two types of fibroelastic membranes, which are the ventricular folds and the vocal folds. The ventricular folds, or also termed the ventricular ligaments, are folds of the mucous membrane in the lumen of the larynx. These rather inelastic folds prevent foreign objects from entering the glottis, thereby protecting the vocal folds. Because the ventricular folds are not involved in the production of sound, they are sometimes referred to as false vocal cords. The vocal folds are found immediately inferior to the ventricular folds and project into the lumen of the larynx from its sidewalls. These vocal folds are also connected to the thyroid cartilage anteriorly and the arytenoid cartilages posteriorly. These vocal folds, which are involved in the production of sound, are sometimes termed the true vocal cords. Laryngitis is an inflammation of vocal folds. This inflammation alters the way the vocal folds come together and, as a result, alters the sound of the voice. Laryngitis changes an individual's voice pattern or causes a complete loss of the voice for a period of seven to 10 days. Next, we will look at the symptoms, causes, and treatments for laryngitis, and finally, give a patient example. Symptoms of laryngitis include the loss or alteration in voice, throat pain, pain when talking, and pain when swallowing. The most common cause of laryngitis is a viral infection, but other causes include straining the voice, such as speaking too loudly or shouting for a prolonged period of time, dehydration, secondary laryngeal infection resulting from a sinus or oral infection, smoking or vaping, laryngeal irritation resulting from gastroesophageal reflux, and or various autoimmune disorders. Treatments for laryngitis can include resting with one voice, drinking lots of fluids, humidifying the air, and medications to treat possible infection, like antibiotics or corticosteroids to help reduce vocal cord inflammation. Finally, let's take a look at a patient example. You receive your patient's file and take a look. Age, 11. Sex, male. Chief complaints, loss of voice and pain when swallowing or talking. You step into the patient's room for an examination. Your patient is visiting with his mom, who explains how your patient just returned home from a week at an overnight summer camp. When he came home from camp, his voice was hoarse, and she predicted it was from a week full of fun, cheering, and chatting. He did at camp with hopes that his voice would return after a couple days of rest at home. However, your patient's voice worsened to the point he was now in pain when speaking and swallowing. 
You suspect that he picked up a viral infection while at camp that is creating a lingering effect of the loss of his voice. You prescribe antibiotics and rest. After four days of being on the antibiotics, your patient's voice begins returning. This is a classic example of laryngitis. Want to see more 3D anatomy and patient case examples? Check out BodyViz, a 3D anatomy learning platform and virtual dissection software. Go to bodyviz.com to learn more.